me, or has the last two years been the era of vaporware? I mean, last year we finally got Duke Nukem Forever after God knows how long. And this past week we got, after eight years of waiting, one of the most anticipated mods in history, Black Mesa. In 2004, Valve re-released Half-Life 1 on the Source Engine. However, it was met with criticism due to looking really no better than the original on the Gold Source Engine. And considering Half-Life 2 was released earlier that year with amazing graphics, this was a real issue. Valve CEO Gabe Newell was once quoted as saying that a fan-made recreation of Half-Life in the Source Engine was not only possible, but inevitable. And he was right. Soon enough, a team led by Carlos Seaman 2K Monterio set out to recreate Half-Life from the ground up using the Source Engine. That game will be known as Black Mesa. After images and trailers had been released, hype was at a fever pitch, and the game was set for a 2009 release. But that didn't happen, and with scarce updates and a when it's done attitude from its developers, people grew skeptical if the game would ever be released, giving it the dreaded vaporware label. But finally, after what seemed like forever, Black Mesa was finally released on September 14th, 2012. I don't feel like I need to talk about the plot of Half-Life, but if you want to know more, then may I direct you to my friend Dax's review over at Late Reviews. So with that done, let's check out Black Mesa. The game opens up the way Half-Life should, and everything from Barney knocking on the door to the Black Mesa facility as a whole showed us they weren't twiddling their thumbs for the past 8 years, as the game looks amazing. Performance wise, my 3 year old computer had to have some of the settings turned down, but even then the game looked beautiful. When you arrive at the facility, all the significant moments are there. The security desk, the microwave casserole, it's all here. See, Black Mesa isn't just a remake, it's a reimagining complete with brand new models and original voice recording for everything. Mainly because a direct remake would be something that even Gabe would frown upon. Guy does have standards, you know. Fans of Half-Life will realize that the game does contain references to its sequel, especially the unique models for Eli and Isaac, and mentioning of Barney. But what's surprising is that we now also have women scientists. It's not surprising that they're there, it's surprising they weren't in the original. Not to mention all the nice little details like the goop that gets in your guns from the bull squid, and the screen going static when you're near radiation, or the way the screen goes when the hound eye attack. Most of what people love from the original are here from the significant set pieces, to killing of everyone, to all the platforming. Wait, no one liked that. The biggest gripe I have with the game is that Gordon's jumping feel is incredibly weak. Most of the major platforming requires you to do a crouch jump, which is fiddly with the button layout on the keyboard, requiring you to press W, Shift, and Space at basically the same time. And while the original Half-Life bends you over backwards with its difficulty, especially with the soldiers, I found the soldiers very easy to blow away in this version. But despite that and some obvious first release graphical and loading issues, Black Mesa is without a doubt one of the most extravagant mods I have ever played. Black Mesa is available from many download sources for absolutely free. All it's required to play it is an official Valve Source game, preferably Half-Life 2. The game is so good though, I actually feel terrible for not paying anything for a game that took 8 plus years to make. As of now, the game only goes up to the Zen levels, which will be available by early 2013, alongside a multiplayer mode. <laughs> wow. So we got Duke Nukem Forever, we got Black Mesa! <laughs> What's next? Half-Life 3? What's next? Half-Life 3? Screw you, Gabe.